Um, first, let me discuss a little bit about what vestibular migraine is. You know, we'll go through a little bit about the uh, background on uh, vestibular migraine. So it's the second most um, common cause of vertigo in adults. The most common cause is, of course, uh, benign paroxysmal positional vertigo or BPPV. However, vestibular migraine is the most common neurological cause of vertigo in adults, and it affects up to 3% uh, of the adult population. The male to female ratio is about one to one and a half to 5.6. So there is a pretty strong um, female predominance in uh, vestibular migraine, you know, mirroring that of uh, regular migraine headache. Most patients with vestibular migraine also have a personal history of migraine headache and motion sickness. Most also have a family history of uh, migraine and up to about a third of patients, is very interestingly, they have a family history of a, a family member with similar episodic uh, vertigo or dizziness. You know, could they have vestibular migraine as well? That is a very strong possibility. You may have come across, you know, various names for vestibular migraine. You know, migraine is vertigo, uh, vertiginous migraine, migraine-associated vertigo, migraine-associated dizziness, migraine-related vestibulopathy, or benign recurrent vertigo. So there are many names to it, and just for the sake of uniformity and to make things very clear, the preferred term nowadays is uh, vestibular migraine. So the, you know, if you have you know, vertigo, if you have dizziness, and you have migraine, does that mean you have vestibular migraine? And the answer is no. So more than 50% of patients with migraine you know, complain of some degree of dizziness and or vertigo. Uh, motion sickness affects up to two-thirds of people who suffer from migraines. Uh, motion sickness can trigger a migraine attack. And vertigo from caloric testing, so those patients you know, who have, where they put cold water or cold air in your ear, warm air, warm water to you know, test your vestibular system, those types of tests trigger vertigo. And any attack of vertigo can trigger a migraine attack. And so not every single migraine patient who has dizziness and vertigo necessarily has vestibular migraine. To make the diagnosis, we use the um, International Classification of Headache Disorders or the ICHD criteria. Um, I won't go through that now for the sake of time. So <clears throat> what sort of symptoms you know, could you suffer from you know, to be uh, diagnosed with vestibular migraine? First, let's discuss you know, what is disease. What is vertigo? So, you know, terminology is very important. You know, it's important for us to, you know, understand what each other is talking about. When I see my patients, um, I always ask them, you know, describe to me what you experience. You know, don't necessarily be locked down on a single term like vertigo or dizziness. I want to understand what the patient feels. And so according to the uh, Barani Society, vertigo refers to the illusion of motion. Um, in the absence of any motion. So if you feel as if you are spinning or your environment is spinning, um, when there's no spinning going on, then that is vertigo. If you feel as if you are you know, falling through space, or if you feel as if things are you know, shimmering around you or things are rocking, things are swaying, in the absence of any such movement, that is considered as vertigo. Dizziness is more of a disorientation without any illusion of motion. So if you feel lightheaded, if you feel disoriented, if you feel discombobulated without feeling as if you are moving or your environment is moving around you, that is defined as dizziness. The vertigo can be spontaneous or triggered. Spontaneous meaning you sit down, you're minding your own business, you know, nothing, you're not doing anything and boom, you get the vertigo. Trigger vertigo is when you do something that causes the vertigo. So, you know, there's head motion induced vertigo. So that's when you move your head and you experience vertigo with the head movement. There's visually induced vertigo. So headache and vestibular migraine attacks, yeah? So vestibular migraine attacks don't necessarily have to come with the headache. The relationship there is uh, inconsistent. So in general, the relationship, I would say, you know, when you want to make the diagnosis of vestibular migraine, you look for other migraine type symptoms. So you look for the visual aura, the light sensitivity, and the sound sensitivity. We don't necessarily have to always look for the uh, headache. You could have, you know, attacks of vertigo associated with light and sound sensitivity, and that is enough to make the diagnosis of uh, vestibular migraine. 
Shearing symptoms, ear symptoms are also pretty common in uh, vestibular migraine. Up to 70% of patients experience some sort of uh, ear, ear symptom. Most commonly, people uh, report here having ringing in their ears. Some people experience pressure in the ears. Some people have impaired hearing. Some people have pain inside the ears. Um, I've had descriptions of unusual symptoms like vibrations or strange sensations, things crawling inside the ears when they have a vestibular migraine attack. Um, this can cause a lot of confusion uh, with Meniere's disease. So, you know, patients with Meniere's disease, they typically experience ear pressure, ringing in the ears, a roaring type of uh, ringing in the ears associated with the attacks of uh, vertigo. Um, you know, so when you experience ringing in the ears, when you experience ear pressure, that can also, you know, with vertigo, that can cause confusion with vestibular migraine. I think the key here is to do the hearing test. So Meniere's disease typically will manifest with loss of hearing on one side, um, whereas you don't typically find that with patients who have uh, vestibular migraine. All right, what are the other symptoms that can come with a vestibular migraine attack? You can have what we call the uh, neuropsychiatric type of symptoms, you know, trouble thinking. Some people refer it to, uh, to it as brain fog. Some people have fatigue, word finding difficulties. You can have autonomic symptoms like dry mouth, you know, sweating. Some people have diarrhea, excessive yawning that occurs with it. Um, sensory symptoms can occur as well, so they can have like non-specific tingling, numbness, pains over the body. Scalp tenderness is also very common. Uh, visual blurring, visual snow in some people. Um, Alice in Wonderland syndrome, you know, where you, know, you have weird experiences like feeling as if you are larger than you are, you feel smaller than you are, you feel objects in your environment become larger, smaller, closer to you than they are, further away, those also can occur during, you know, a vestibular migraine attack. <clears throat> How about those who experience, you know, dizziness? all the time. I think we had a question in the previous um, comments before we got disconnected. How about if you're dizzy all the time? Could you still have vestibular migraine? And the answer is yes. So if you think of chronic migraine, for example, you know, patients have headache most days of the month, but then suffer, you know, attacks of your typical migraine headache during those episodes. You know, in the same way, patients with vestibular migraine can be continuously dizzy. But then during certain times, they have an attack of increased dizziness or increased vertigo. Um, a lot of my patients with migraine and vestibular migraine also describe some degree of you know, visual dizziness and head motion induced dizziness, even if they're not having attacks. So, you know, they describe, you know, having trouble when they go to a grocery store, having trouble with uh, 3D movies, you know, looking at ceiling fans, like a lot of uh, our patients experience, moving their head around too much makes them dizzy, uh, having large trucks move really um, fast past their vehicle also makes them dizzy. Um, and a lot of patients also experience motion sickness. <clears throat> what are the typical triggers for vestibular migraine? And most of them are very similar to migraine. So weather changes, you know, not enough sleep, stress, menstrual cycle, bright light, flashing lights, um, missing meals, food uh, type of triggers like uh, you know, caffeine, chocolate, alcohol. Um, and most uh, trigger vertigo refers to vertigo that is caused by something that you do. You know, so head motion in this vertigo refers to vertigo that occurs when you are moving your head. Visually induced vertigo occurs when you are exposed or when you view a very busy visual scene. For example, you know, if you watch an action movie and then you get vertigo, um, that is visually induced vertigo. Positional vertigo occurs when you put your head in a specific position. So it's different from head motion induced vertigo. So head motion induced vertigo occurs when you are moving your head, whereas positional vertigo occurs once you have put your head in a specific position. Um, postural symptoms refer to, you know, the description of, you know, feeling off balance, feeling as if you, well, you know, you cannot maintain an upright position. That is uh, what is referred to as postural symptoms. So more than one type of dizziness, more than one type of vertigo can be present during a uh, vestibular migraine attack. So in the study that we did, you know, at uh, UT Southwestern last year, it was published last year, it, does, it found that, you know, most patients experience, you know, at least two to three 
different vestibular symptoms when they have a vestibular migraine attack. So, you know, don't be confused if, you know, you find that you have spinning and you're also lightheaded. You also feel, you know, you're as if you're off balance or if you feel that, you know, you're spinning, but then things are also tilting at the same time. Um, you know, that can be part of vestibular migraine. So the question comes, you know, when does the vertigo occur during a migraine attack? Does that happen in the prodrome, you know, leading up to a migraine? Does it happen that? Does it happen in the aura phase? Does it happen during the headache phase? Does it happen as the uh, headache is resolving? Or does it happen, you know, in the postdrome phase? Once everything is over, then the vertigo hits. And the answer is all the above. There is no fixed point in time during a migraine attack that vertigo must occur or should occur. It can happen at any time during the migraine attack. And so the key is to find the relationship. If we, there is a consistent relationship between a migraine attack and the vertigo, regardless of whenever the vertigo occurs during that migraine attack, if they are linked in time, then you can make the diagnosis of vestibular migraine. The question always arises. You know, I have patients ask me that question. I have clinicians ask me it as well. But, you know, if I don't have a headache, can I still have vestibular migraine? And the answer is yes. So migraine headache, uh, they tend to become less frequent and less severe as people get a bit older. And so, you know, we look back, migraines tend to resolve and uh, as people get older, and then vestibular migraine tends to set in. And so there's a very inconsistent relationship between vestibular migraine episodes and headaches. You know, different studies report different um, frequencies and it goes anywhere from, you know, a quarter to about three quarters of patients have a consistent relationship between the yeah, vestibular migraine attacks and a migraine headache. And to make things a little bit more complicated, a lot of times people who have vestibular migraine don't have really severe headaches. The headaches are often, you know, not as distressing as what they experienced when they were younger. And the vertigo is the far more uh, prominent symptom that they experience. And you know, even in, in some patients even just say, hey, you know, I have just some head pressure, but no headache when I have a vestibular migraine attack. So the key here is, you know, since headache is not a very consistent finding, we look for other type of migraine manifestations. We look for you know, visual aura. Is there light sensitivity? Is there sound sensitivity? So for example, if you have um, vertigo attacks that come with light sensitivity and sound sensitivity, but no headaches, we still can make the diagnosis of vestibular migraine. And how about hearing symptoms, ear symptoms, these are also extremely common. They affect up to 70% of vestibular migraine uh, patients. You know, most of the time there is ringing in the ears, but you also can experience ear pressure, you know, muffled hearing, um, ear pain. I have some patients who experience, uh, some triggers can be really unique to you. Um, I have had, yes, stress, somebody mentioned stress, big trigger for vestibular migraine and for migraines. Tops trigger actually. Um, the triggers can be very unique. I've had some patients describe very unusual triggers like um, ketchup or pizza. So very unusual triggers can be present. The key to identifying your triggers to help you avoid the triggers is to keep a journal. If you can see like a consistent relationship, if you eat a certain thing and that causes your vertigo attack, a vestibular migraine attack, then you know most likely that that is your trigger. 